What's up, family? Today I'm gonna to talk about how I got my credit score to 800 in six years. So I started my credit journey in 2018, around March, 19 years old. Now I'm 25, right? So it was a long journey. I topped out at 811. Right now it's hovering at 802, 803. But my high score was 811. That was what two months ago. So the ways I did this was really, really consistent, man. And it starts with the number one thing. You have to have a great, 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 great payment history. Look, just be consistent with your payment history. My payment history is 100%. I've never been late. I've never been late, never missed anything. That's just me. That's my method. So, but it's also fast. So I'm saying this played a big part of me getting that 800 credit score. Another one that went along with that is credit utilization. Just think about it. I'm not joking right now, but it depends on how much you have available. Me, I'm not going to disclose how much credit I have available to me, but I can tell you my usage rate. Guess what my usage rate is? It's like 0%. Because every time I use my credit card, I pay it back in full at the end of each month. That's what I do. Now, granted, I wasn't able to always do that. But again, you got to live and you learn. And I'm honestly not going to say I wasn't able to do that. I just was misled about it. I was always told you want to keep your credit usage between 10 to 30 percent. Some of you all probably been told the same thing. The reason they said that was it shows that you're good at managing money and that you'll pay it back. But that's not the case. The case is that credit score wants to see you being able to get that money and pay it back. Granted, 30% is not bad. That is so true and so fair. But the reason, this is the reason I say you want to try to aim for 0%. Let's say, for instance, life happens, you have an emergency, you need to pull some of your credit funds. Guess what? If you're already using 10 to 30 percent, that may just put you over the limit. And think about it. If you're at 10 to 30 percent, you're already in debt. So now you're managing your debt, but you're still in debt. So now an emergency happens and that pushes you to 40, 50 percent. Now you're 50 percent out of 100. Now that's going to hurt you. So that's why I say keep it at zero. So that way if emergency happens, guess what? You're at 10, 15 percent. Depending on how much you have already in your credit profile. Because I don't know what your credit balance may be. I don't know that. I don't know the total amount you may have at your disposal. But just keep that in mind, man. So that's really, really, really important in keeping your credit score high and keeping your credit score elevating each month. Also. Your credit history and lent. So when I took my new job, I met a husband and wife that had 800 credit score. And I asked them how they did it. And they told me off the jump, credit history lent. So at that point, immediately, I did not close my last card. So right now, my longest card has been since I started my credit journey in 2018. That's my longest card. Six years and like four months. Six years, eight months. So that is my longest card. I will never close that card. No matter what happens, I will never close it. It just looks so good to have that on my credit history, and I still use it. So I have like small bills going to. I have bills spread it out throughout my credit collection, so that way stuff can just stay active. It just doesn't look like I'm hoarding the money. Like it's making it seem like I'm using it, and then I just pay it back every month on all of them auto draft. So just keep that in mind. Another one, credit mix. When I have a great mixture of credit cards, man, like a few examples, man, I have a couple American Express. I got a gas card, American Express, more rewards. I have a Navy Federal flagship card. I got a gold American Express card. I think I got like a platinum card from Capital One. I have a venture from Capital One. I even have an Apple card. So those are some of my small cards that I have. And I'm not just getting all these cards at one time. So I'm being responsible about it because you know you get increased. So I spread it out throughout how many applications I do. A lot of them I just get offers to do it most of the time because of how high my credit is. And it doesn't impact me because they're doing something that's saying that they won't pull my credit. So it won't impact me in that aspect. It will impact me positively though because now 
it opens a new line of credit, which gives me higher money that I have on my account. Meaning that again, like I just said, now if you need to spend that money, it lessens your percentage that you utilize. Think about that. Think about that. Think about it. So that's what you need to think about, man. Think about that at all times. Yeah. You just got to know how to play your cards right when it comes to credit. Man, I could do a whole video, another video on credit and how to do it. But this one is just keeping it simple and straight to the point. And this is how I grew my credit score to 800 in six months. Again, like I said, you want to build a solid payment history. Always avoid late fees. Try not to be late. Have your stuff on auto pay. If you need to, just have it on auto pay. Like I said, keep it below 10%, man. Keep it below 10%. If you got 10,000, guess what? 10% of 10,000 is how much? A thousand. If you got a thousand, 10% of a thousand is a hundred. So as you can see, like I said, how much you have available, it changes your scale on how much you can use. So just remember that, man. Look, every six months, ask for your credit line increases. The reason I say that is, again, it helps you in your percentage use your utilization. So just keep that in mind. Always, at every six months, do it. It's free. It doesn't hurt you to ask. Look, again, I'm going to emphasize it. Let your accounts age. Stop closing your accounts because you're not using it. Stop doing that. Stop closing the accounts. Keep the account open. I even have a children place card open, man. Honestly. I just get my girls' jackets from there. I really don't shop at children's place anymore, but I even have a children's place card. I'm really not a big fan of like the store cards, but again, you got kids and you shop for clothes a lot. It just makes sense. I have to buy them clothes. So it just so happened I was shopping at Children's Place a lot. So uh, that made sense for me. But if something makes sense for you, do it. I just wouldn't recommend something like a consumer card. So I would never recommend you to go get a Best Buy card. That's an electronic consumer card, man. Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Like I said as well, limit. How many new credit applications you put in as well, man. Try to keep that to a minimum if you can. Keep it limited because you remember, they don't go away from your credit report for two years. So just keep that because that's a hard pull. You don't want to waste your hard pulls, man. And like I said, diversify your credit. So don't have, I use one end of the spectrum when I talk about credit cards, but it, remember, You still got other stuff as well, man. You still got car loans, home loans, personal loans. You got to keep that stuff to a minimum too, man. Because like I said, you don't want your debt to income ratio to be lopsided. You want to keep that at a fair amount, man. So keep that really, really low. Don't overgo on that limit. If you're making 100 k you should not be 500 k in debt. That's bad. That's bad. I don't care what no one tells you. That's bad. If you're making 100 k and you're 500 k in debt, that's bad. I don't even care if it's a house. That's bad. That's just too much money, man. That's just too much money in debt. You're way, way underwater. So just keep that in mind. It's not about how much you make. It's about your debt to income ratio. Keep that low at all times by any means. Please monitor your credit score regularly. You will be surprised how much stuff pops up on your credit and you wouldn't know it. I remember in 2018 when I got out of school, I really didn't know anything about the student loans. Just me checking my credit. I remember when that student loan popped up on my credit history. If I was never checking that, I probably would have got a late fee for that, which still would affect me today. So I'm glad me being 18, I paid attention to stuff like that and I was able to look at that and pay it off instantly because it was something small because i had a scholarship but you know how that works you still have something that slips through the crack and i just had to take care of it so just make sure you take care of that use debt use credit wisely man don't get too far ahead 
Don't get too far ahead of yourself. Don't use too much that you can't control, man. Please don't use too much you can't control. And then again, I just give you another example by years, man. If you're in the first two years, man, try to build consistent on-time payments at all time. Build those consistent on-time payments. Lower your usage rate, man. Lower your usage rate. Dispute any errors if you have errors in your credit history. Look, for the third to fourth year, try this. Keep that low usage rate going on and keep your Asian accounts, don't close them. And for the last three years, five, six, and seven, just keep that consistent cycle going, man. And in no time, you will be at 802. And this is, again, this is starting from a fair credit score. So I didn't start from 400, 300. I started from a fair 600 credit score. Never had any bankruptcy on my credit. None of that. It's just with straight grind. Like, it's just with straight fair credit. So just keep that in mind when you do it. All right? All right, family. Thank y'all for tuning in, man. Keep watching. Keep subscribing, baby. Look. We only can go up from here, man, just like our credit score, man. See y'all next time.